All right, boys, welcome to the Full Send Podcast, where we do no research and we suck at podcasting. This episode today is sponsored by Prize Picks. If you guys are like me and you're a f- degenerate, you like to fire on sports, try out the Prize Picks app. Prize Picks is the best because instead of choosing teams, you're choosing individual players. So each player is a set projection, and you either go more or less in that set projection. If you're smart with sports and you know what players are going to f- get hot, what players are going to perform on a certain night, try out the Prize Picks app. And also, boys, we've got a code for you guys. Use code NELK. So if you're trying out the app for the first time, plug in the NELK code. It's a 100% deposit bonus. So if you put in 100 bucks, that code's going to match your 100 bucks. So make sure you take advantage of that code. Prize Picks is available in 70% of the United States, California, Texas, Florida, which is really dope. Download the Prize Picks app. Take advantage of that code, boys. That code's for you. And uh, try it out. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get into the pod. Sorry, we like to be cribs or what? Yeah. <laughs> this room is gonna be f-ing crazy. Um, probably be here later solo, actually. But uh, yeah, no, this is the addition. Come out this way. This is where I like to get deep in my thoughts. Uh, sometimes I'll write out here. I've wrote a, I've actually wrote a couple songs that are coming out, but just chill out here, smoke, maybe get a bottle going. But uh, yeah, that's it. All right, you see my crib? Get the f- out. All right. Yo. Yo, yo. I don't know if you know this, me and your boy Polo are actually uh, good friends. We worked out t- yesterday. Oh, for real? We go to the same gym. That's just sad. That's just sad. Boy. He kind of came in though, and I swear, I think he just sat on one machine and then he just dipped. Sat there for 10 minutes left. That sounds like what you do. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why we get along, bro. That's why we go together. Yeah, cheating. Yeah. No, cheating, just, what's, what's this week like been for you? Like post album drop? I mean, it's been a lot of work. It's been exciting. Oh. A lot of work though. Yeah, just like a shit ton of media. Yeah. What What's it feel like though? Like after everything that's like you kind of been through the last like two years almost. You haven't dropped in like two years. How How good does it feel to drop? Like the album's fire. I appreciate. Um, I mean, it feel good. Like I mean, like the last two years, I've been just trying to figure out. Well, really, the last year, I've been just trying to figure out when I could drop. In the mix of it, I was still trying to get certain things ready and shit like that, but. It's like, I feel like I'm at a new phase. Like I said before in a couple of interviews, it's like my last project or my last album, my label, and I get to move on. So I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit more creative control and be able to do things how I want to do it a little better. What, what do you, what do you like, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you think the difference will be like after you're done I mean, with the label? I mean, the label just likes to do things like very strategic and then they have an input on what they think is good. And stuff like that, we have to come to agreements for me to drop in the situation I'm now. Are you talking more about like timing and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, about basically, I, I, be, I guess I would drop a little bit more consistently. Yeah. And, you know. Saw 8 million streams in one day. Does that, is that like a sign of relief for you when you're like, damn, thank God, like this is <clears throat> huge success right out of the gate? Yeah, facts, facts, facts. It is. Um, I like I just be putting I be putting a lot of time in it, and I kind of like I know like I know kind of like be weird sometimes. So I just like I felt like as long as I put my all into the music, you know, whatever it does is what it's supposed to do, you know. Yeah, I saw that yeah. you in this album. You said you talked more about like personal stuff, like you Back. talked about your family and just stuff you hadn't referenced in the past. So it was like a whole different project. And how long were you working on this one? I mean, it's been two years, so kind of two years, even though in the middle of t- the two years, the vibe and the aesthetic of the project kind of changed. So, but kind of like two years, I-, I could say. Yeah. No, the album's fire. You've always had just like, your music's always been like really fire. Yeah, I And like you hit it. so many different genres, like you could do the poppy kind of stuff. Have you always wanted to do like that poppy kind of stuff too? Because you sampled like... Didn't you sample Bieber's song, one less yeah. song, or was it Baby? Yeah, I kind of like I, I like I kind of want to do what I, like I kind of want to do like a little bit of all, and I feel like it might not be highlighted that much, but without people actually saying that it's that, they still realize it or they still fall into it because I got songs like on the album, like the song with me and Favi called Blah Blah. Dude, I think that's his best, Fabio's best verse he's ever done. <laughs> Yeah, now nah, that song is hard. That song's yeah. crazy. 
Yeah. The Kid Leroy track's fire too. Yeah, so now when I say that, I mean like I got songs on the album from Blah Blah to the Kid Leroy song. Then you go to like a song like Call On My Phone, which is even a little bit more lighter. And, you know, so I feel like that's my goal to just always stay in different pockets and, you know, just try to touch all genres and get as much people to like TJ's music as possible. What what do you, what does your like fan base and audience go more crazy for? Like the more R&B type shit or like the more harder shit? I feel like this is the way it goes. All right. So normally like for a drill record or like a harder record. I feel like it's easier for me to pick it as in what's going to go, but they don't go as far as if I pick the right, like, singing song, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, so, like, a song, like, I don't know what Blah Blah will do, but a song like Zoo York or, you know, like, certain, certain like, drill songs, they, like, kind of got, like, a little peak point that I feel like they just don't be passing, you know? And, like, a singing song will go further, you know, but it's harder to know which one of those will go all the way, you know? You can never really predict that though, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I just feel like I'm a little bit more accurate with the with the up-tempo songs, you know? With those like melodic type beats and like the hooks you do, do you just go in those and knock those out? Like yeah. on the spot? Yeah, sometimes. Like the song Too Grown, it's crazy because I have, uh, like I say, I don't know why right there. That line right there, I might have recorded that. I don't know when the hell I recorded that. The first, like, four or five lines um, was recorded. I have to double check on the date in the file to see when. And my engineer, we was, like, kind of putting the album together. My engineer was like, yo, you never finished this. And I'm like, fuck, I made this. I don't know. And what? I finished that shit real quick. I sent it to Leroy, like, last minute. Like, yo, you trying to hop on this, bro? He sent it back the next couple of days. It was up. How many, how many, like, does he do one attempt when you send it to him? He just tries it one time, sends it to you, and you repeat it? I got it? one version of it. Oh, okay. I got one version of it. And you just listen to it, and you're like, this works? Yeah, facts. What about I Fabi? Already, oh, me and Fabi was in the stool. Oh, okay. Fabi wasn't even really supposed to hop on that track. I got on the track. Like, I was just, for me, like, I fake got on the track, so a while, and for me, <laughs> Probably like you want me on this song? <laughs> like I yeah, get on that real quick for me. Like we was just cool and you know? And he hopped on that shit. And he like, well, we had dropped some shit called Trauma on YouTube and we took it down like cause we had made blah blah the same day and we like, nah, that's gonna kill blah blah. Which we wanted to wait in a little second to drop blah blah so we could left up trauma. But that's how it went. How, what does a studio session with you and Fabi look like? Bro be bringing me mad energy. Like, I'm kind of like, my friends, on average, like, I Brooklyn niggas, mm-hmm. he from Brooklyn, I'm from the Bronx. Yeah. Brooklyn niggas, on average, to me, be having, like, more energy. Like, you know, like, him, like, being stupid with him, or, like, pop, more fun than being a stupid like me. You know? I'm like, my friends is more, like, mellow. So when I go, like, around Favi, like, his crowd, his energy, everything just brings me up. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, does he record like the grrr, like does he record that every time or are they just like is there just a spot where like the engineer's like yo let's put in a, like a grrr right there <laughs> oh no nah, that's just like that take two seconds grrr buzzers all type of new ones he do the new ones <laughs> that's dope you gotta keep them fresh right yeah yeah I, I do everything I do everything fresh too right? but yeah you've been you started like rapping or at least writing when you were what we saw like grade six like you would write like shit yeah. for your, your aunt I saw first grade with your aunt. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I was about to say real, real early, probably way earlier than that. First like, grade? Yeah, like first grade with my aunt writing down little rhymes and stuff like that. Facts. Like, do you remember, like, I know probably, it's so long ago, but like, you remember anything? Like, what kind of poems were you writing? Like, they gotta be cleaner about? lyrics. You didn't start like that. Yeah, no, I didn't start off like wild. And what was the rap about, like, getting my education and the wish? And, like, she said, <laughs> like Pokemon and shit? Or like, try to help me? No, I'm not Pokemon. I used to like Pokemon cards, but I never watched Pokemon. Would you ever go back to like the cleaner, like first grade type lyrics, education stuff? Nah, nobody want to hear that shit. <laughs> <clears throat> nobody want to hear that shit. Uh, so then you, you just continue through school. We saw that you were kind of in and out of trouble, and then um, I think you were in juvie, and I read that you started to like all the other guys that were in there were like, "Yo, you gotta start rapping for us," and like at lunches and dinners, they'd gas you up. 
Yeah, something like that for sure. I used to like write all the time in my book and stuff like that and just be off to myself. So write in and then sometimes I'd be like, yo, what you got? Let me hear something. Yo, or I might tell somebody, yo, look at this. Yo, what you think about this? Got my little notebook, rap it to me. They're like, oh shit, got the whole TV. Run that back, run that back. Let me hear that one more time. Damn. Go crazy for me. Is that when you discovered like, yo, this so, could actually be something or did you know before that? Yeah, facts. I like, I was in, I was like, I remember like before, like I was leaving jail, like everybody was telling me, like even like the COs, everybody like, yo, you dad gonna blow T, you just focus up, you could that blow. I already had like my first song was called Resume at the end. It got the famous little lines. I ran it back on mood swings that got up on my bird can. It's working. I wrote that at like 15 years old in jail. Damn. Well, did Damn, yeah. Like, the officers are saying you're going to blow oh, the and That's how were, you know you're like, about it too? Mm-hmm. On the way up. Shit. That oh, little whole little saying, they used to be like, yo, how that shit go? Run that back. That's me <laughs> being in jail. Damn, bro. So they broke character. They're like, fuck, this is fire. Yeah. Nah, it's not broke character. It's like, for me, we used to have that type of vibe. It don't be like, that's yeah. stiff. Yeah. What was it like growing up in the Bronx? It's crazy. Like, I really, like, you see this trench care shit? Like, I feel like a lot of people don't even understand for real, like, how, like, serious it is. Like, <clears throat> it's not, like, this is not a gang. This is, like, necessarily me. And it represents, like, anybody could be a trench care. Trench care my fans. Like, you know, it's just, like, I'm really from the trenches, and a lot of people don't understand, like, us, you know? People that's, like... That's like that, like, for example, like, like when I say, like, Roaches Project was, like, I know niggas, like, a lot of people that really live with rats and roaches, like, you feel me? Because they, cause they going to just, they going to get into your crib because where you live at, they going to make their way in. I don't give a fuck how clean your shit is. You got food, they coming. Yeah. What were some of the toughest things, like, for you growing up? My mom, like, never, like, wanted me to be soft. Right, so like I got like so this is what I mean by like on some trench kid shit like, like you probably never been through this one. Maybe you have, but I don't know. Like my mama, like let's say if like somebody disrespect her, or she hear about a problem or animosity, she addressing shit. My mom is yo, who wanna fight my son? Or yo, TJ, come in. Yo, fuck him up. Like that eyes. Like my mom woke me on my sleep before. Like yo, this nigga said some crazy shit to me downstairs. Like, you feel me? That's like, funny as fuck. That's how, like, my life gave, you feel me? Like, talking about Easter, he gave me some bread, go to the thrift shop, go get some, some you feel me? So I got to the point where I don't want that shit, and I don't want no bummy ass shit, so I was going to give me some money. Yeah. Damn, that's wild. And then, so, you're kind of growing up like that. You get out, then you drop a resume, and then everything changed from there, right? Facts. Then I start seeing, like, and where do you the drop that on? Like where, like which SoundCloud? SoundCloud. So like, did you have other tracks on SoundCloud yet? Nah, that was my first one. I had put some shit out called Forbes. That was my first one with a video. I took it right down. I didn't like it. Did you have followers on SoundCloud or anything? No. Nah. You just made the yeah. account and dropped it. Made track. the account, dropped it. How long did it take to like, after upload, did it take to get traction and go crazy? Let's say the first day it got like 400 views. Then 700,000, maybe got 2,500 in a week. Next week, 7,000. Next week, 13. Next week, 30. Next week, 50. Like, it just went up like that almost immediately. Damn. Did, did any other, like, artists or anybody find the track or, like? Nah, I just feel like it just went up until, you feel me? Did it go big in New York, specifically? It went big in New York, for sure. Like, yeah. So we're, like, Yeah. Damn, like the SoundCloud and like anything, like you know. Okay, the so SoundCloud era was crazy too, because like, not that it was easier back then, but like, do you think that was like a good time for you to be in that era where like, because a lot of songs are going viral on SoundCloud, right? Because it was so I came new. out like right like towards the end. Like for example, I remember like when I had first came home, like might have been like the first two weeks. <clears throat> um. I had seen about the um, kid X, X, X passing away. And at the time, I wasn't in tune to his music or almost anybody on that double XL class of like 2016. I didn't really know the music because when I was incarcerated, I would only listen to like radio, mainstream hits. They would play some country music sometimes. Like, you know, so I ain't really like hear like of none of them. Like Tay K, for example, I never really heard of him until I got out. 
Like, so when I came out, it was like right, right at the end of SoundCloud. Okay. Almost like of the prom of SoundCloud. Right. So when that, when resume gets traction and it goes crazy, what happens from there? I started getting hit ups from labels and stuff like that. My mom didn't know I was a rapper at the time. How do they contact you? On Facebook, I had first, I first had Facebook for a little while. Then it's crazy because one of my homies, his name Y3, he made an Instagram for me. He's like, yo, you got to use Instagram. I'm telling you, it's for everybody using. You still using Facebook? I'm like, what you mean, bro? Facebook valid. Fuck the Instagram. So he like, I'm going to make you one. He made me Instagram. He showed me. He like, look, you already got fan pages. You ain't even got an Instagram. I'm like, where? He made me Instagram. I probably picked the page up when it had like 30, 40K. Damn. Like, you feel me? Just off that one track. Yeah, like, you feel me? No, 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 no. It was oh, a couple of tracks. Brothers on, on like, like, to when I really started, like, right, right. having an app on my phone, like, I let me post on this. So how many how many record labels do you think you went to or you talked with before you went with Columbia? Six, seven. And what made you decide to go with them? I had, I had a good conversation with somebody that worked at the um, label. And I felt like we was out of eye. And... And... He believed in me genuinely, and the money was right. It was, you know. Yeah. How, how did you like navigate that situation? Were you by yourself, or did you have like anyone who did you look to for like advice or like? Because you were young, you were, were you seventeen. Yeah, that's crazy. Like I said, my mom ain't even really know. Like my first time, my mom even really knew like I was a rapper. I'm showing her a contract. Like, what did she think you were doing? What did she think I was doing in life? Yeah, if you if she didn't know you were rapping. Oh, running the streets. Yeah. You got to remember, I put like this too. Remember, so I was adopted, right? So I got my 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 mom, which like I say my aunt sometimes, and then my mom, right? And like my aunt, I leave her like super oblivious to <laughs> shit. You feel me? My mom, I be looking at him, paying no mind. Like, it ain't no reason to even talk about it for what? She going to look at me rapping what? Rap about what? For me, not paying her no mind. So for me, like when I by the time I did it, it was kinda like for me, I damn near didn't even like I ain't wanna get in the conversation about what I'm doing. Like you feel me? I already felt like nobody didn't understand me. You know, so I'm like, you know what? I'm in here, everybody and I kinda like I used to feel like like my mom, yeah, everybody ain't understand me. I just came out of jail, everybody looking at me, I'm like a bad kid, a fuck up. Like, you know what? I got a plan. I know what I'm about to do. Yeah, I do what y'all do for me. I do what I do. What was that initial bag for that, for the for the first deal? At 17. Seven figures. That's fucking crazy. At that age, 17? <clears throat> for sure. Fast. Didn't you get like, you got like an advance, right? And you went and spent money. Is that true? You went and spent like 20 grand on Jordans for you and your boys? Yeah. I don't even think, you know what's crazy? Life changed because if I want to spend twenty thousand, I could do that too fast. Right now, I'm thinking about going on a jet. Yeah, I'm about to hit Polo see if you want to go half of me. Go on the jet. That shit might be like sixty thousand. We'll go thirds maybe if you want. Yeah, right, where yeah. are you going? The road out Miami. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We're about to go there. Yeah, for real though. Yeah, I want to, and so basically, <laughs> it's easy. I know how to spend some money now, and I pulled out twenty thousand, but I that didn't even spend the whole twenty thousand. I took everybody get. Two, three, four pairs of shoes because these wasn't thousand dollar shoes weren't attractive at the time because we didn't know nobody with it. It wasn't like yeah. a thing. And Jordans, I didn't know how to spend twenty thousand on them Jordans. Yeah, like you feel me? We yeah. kind of got everything that looked attractive to our eye. Why? And, why was your first instinct like, yo, got twenty grand, I gotta go take care of everybody? Cause I felt like that was my duty in life. Like, even to the point where, like, after that, I do stuff for people, and I realize, like, all right, you wild. You ain't getting nowhere from that. That shit just slowing you down. You trying to do so much for 100 people, and they not bringing back nothing in return for it. You feel me? Yeah. And I used to be so frustrated for myself, because, like, yo, why does this person have to struggle when I know him for all these years? Like, you got to do it. Like, you feel me? Get to the point where nobody got to struggle. And I, I used to think. And now that list of who I do it for slimmed up a lot, you know? Yeah. And then what? You're 17. Well, I would have done the same thing. I want to throw it out there. You would have balled out? I would have taken care of all my people. Yeah, what? Balling. Yeah. 
you said you uh, then what you like started just chilling in the city at 17 after that big bag and just were you staying in hotel rooms for like a long ass time i probably hell yeah i was a tweet i probably i probably i stood in hotel rooms i stay in hotel rooms in a car i might stay at a girl crib i'm fully signed i'm walking around with two of the brodies all the way until last year for real for real, i'm walking around with one or two brodies Walking around all my chains on. Just going all crazy. Type of, yeah, feel me? I, and for the first couple months when I was got signed, I used to be just be in the hotel room, just keep extending hotel rooms and for me while I'm getting cribs and little stuff like that. How how much money in smoking fines have you did you pay in that year? <laughs> for smoking fines, I remember it was times where we was getting a smoking fine out of like three rooms every day when I was like 17. Did you pay them or you just gas it? Yeah, I would pay it. I was paying too much. Was there any party that was like, yo, maybe we should just smoke outside and then come in the room after? Nah, it it's was not as real, fun smoking real outside immature. though. I don't know. It was like I was real mature. You know what we used to do? I remember I used to have this hotel that they kicked me out. They let me go back now. I think it's because I'm older, more star. They knew I was a rapper then, but we used to pro take like a bucket of water, garbage can, and just throw it out the window. <laughs> That shit was bad. And kid shit, man. When did you like realize like, hey, maybe I got to change a little bit and I can't stay in hotels every night and do, keep up with that shit? It just like, it just whack. Because I remember I'm 17. I used to be trying to have people, yo, book this hotel for me, bro. I'm going to give you the cash. Or you am cash at you. I don't know. Use your ID. Like, I'm really like, you feel me? Oh, yeah, because you can't that, even fucking book it. Yeah, before oh, I was shit. 17, way before I was 17, I was like a, like a loner. Like, I used to not be home. I won't go home for five months, four months, you feel me? Probably popping out, stuff like that. So now I just got the money. I'm still trapping. Like, my mom did not think, oh, you this mainstream kid. Like, it ain't just work like that, you feel me? It's like you this treacherous kid, trench kid, and you just got some bread for me. Hotel room, <laughs> like you on the road, like you busting a movie for me. That's how that go. I was just till I finally got a spot, and it was it was lit. And how hard was that once you like kind of became more mainstream and like you know a public figure? What was it like, like going back to the streets and then going back to doing that? What did you learn along that? I mean, while I was kind of like lit, like it wasn't until I left New York. But when I moved, like when I lived in New York, all the way until I moved, I would go probably stay in the city. But the only place I chilled or knew where to chill or how to chill was on the block. So you was liable to see me walking. The same thing like K-Flock when he was out and other rappers like that really, really like be from the trenches. Like you liable if you just come over this way between um, 1 p.m. to... 2 p.m., I mean, to 2 a.m., you liable to probably see me on that corner walking up and down the block, you know what I'm saying? So you treat it the same when you go back? Now? Yeah. Absolutely not. I can't. Yeah. It's like too, too, too much, you know? There's some people that look at me like regular. But the whole, like, you know what I'm saying? Kids that was 10 years old now, before it's 15, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, it's no way. Like, at first, it wouldn't feel like I was famous or lit. When I'm in the hood, because it was normal there. But now it's same. Is there anything you miss about that lifestyle? Man, not really. Kind of, but not really. Is it ever, like, is there any ways you can, like, show love still or go back there, or, like, give back there? Because I'm sure you obviously want to do that. Like, is that hard? Yeah, it's kind of be hard, because I be feeling like a lot of people be feeling like I owe them shit. That's so, true, yeah. Like, so... That shit is a conflict of interest. That shit ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? And like looking out for the community is one thing. But then, you know, like, like I know, like right now, like where I'm from, there's people that be saying, yo, TJ, I ain't never do this, do that for me, do this. But the same people that say something like that, I'll fuck around and be wearing my clothes. Like to extent, like I like have like, let's say like a wardrobe of clothes I wore for the last two months and just send it back to the hood. Yo, get these out. Yo, ooh, ooh. Do that for me. I ain't never do it directly, right? Mm. But now it's niggas out there that you feel me that I grew up with too, but I but, can't maintain it every day. Like, might be wearing my shit. You like, see that walking nigga don't be with... doing shit for niggas, man. That nigga mad rich, he left us. For me. But I just look at it as to me, you don't understand. 
And damn, bro, I wish you could understand. You feel me? <laughs> like, yeah. No, it's funny, though. That ain't like, how life about to go. You're on the gram and your boy's just wearing your t-shirt. He's back home. Yeah. Shit like that. Yeah, like, that must be tough, right? Yeah. Does that ever, like, that, does that get annoying? Uh, no, annoying. No, I, I don't really wear too much stuff, like, repeatedly. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, people thinking that they, like, you owe them shit or something. I zone them out. Yeah. You know, when people be talking nonsense, especially something that I just know I'm right about, or regardless of how you feel about it, it's not going to change the way I feel about it, I like to zone them out. Yeah. You know, so, so, being in New York, what, you want to tell us about your first, like, link with Pop Smoke? First time I ever, like, linked, well, the first time I ever met Pop Smoke, I was barely even a rapper. I was, um, I had probably like 16K on Instagram around there. And I was like, so cool, still cool. And it was my boy Jay Guapo. And we was going, he like, yo, I'm about to meet this DJ, DJ Drewski. He like, yo, I'm about to meet DJ Drewski at this spot. I'm telling him I'm about to meet Drewski, I'm lying. And he like, yo, yo, I'm a couple to you. I'm like, I right, bet. He like, yo, my man's got the V. He pulls up, his man's driving, his pop smoke. For me, so now. I believe it was a video from that day. I don't know where it's at. And I was barely a rapper, you know what I'm saying? So now Jay Guapo's rapping out of the time go by. Now I got about like 3 million followers. And my boy Guapo, like, yo, remember my boy out of that from that day? Man, he like, yo, he a rapper now. Look, look at his music. His shit doing I ain't. Pop might have had like two, three hundred thousand um followers. No. Streams. On YouTube on one video. Views. What 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 do you song? To the yeah, party. What? No, NPR. Oh. NPR. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's exactly what it was. NPR. It might have had like Yeah, like maybe maybe like 150,000, honestly, to be honest. It was like real, real early. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I might even gonna capture and say I was like in love with it. You know, I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I remember now it might have been like Wait, are you so at this point are you you're bigger than him? Oh, I, I got like three million followers. Okay. At the time, and Pop like, and Pop probably got like five thousand followers. Damn, okay. right? Yeah. So boom. So now I'm like, okay, okay. Now I go to do this show in um, like upstate New York, and we sneak into the dorms. That's why I say we doing crazy shit. We sneak into the dorms. We in the girls' dorms. I'm with the whole gang. We in the dorms. We play party in the girls' dorm. We chilling, getting drunk, and we listening to like music, and then basically like. YouTube playing some like drill shit, whatever. And the next song come on is Pop Smoke. It was his new song. Feel me? And that shit come on. Baby, welcome to the party. And we like, yo, who this? And I'm like, yo, oh, that's the nigga from ah, da, 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 da. And we ran that welcome to the party back like five times and it had just dropped. I called Pop. This is crazy because this is like, I'm just playing my first time telling this. I called Pop ASAP. Like, yo, hit him. Like, yo, yo, what's up, bro? Ooh, your music fire. Da, da, da. I tell Guapo, like, yo, your man's got some heat. Yo, bring him to the stool. I link up with Pop. He pulls up with one person. The one person he pulls up with is Favio Foreign. What? What? Favio's not even a rapper. Wow. That's like some <laughs> superhero movie shit or some shit. The one person he pulls up is Favio Foreign. And we listen in the Welcome to the Party. He plays me Dior, unreleased. I'm like, whoa, Jeez. this is heat. Yeah. Da, da, da. Feel me? He like, yo, which one you gonna hop? We gonna hop on one? I'm like, I don't know. I ain't hopping on no Dior. I wasn't fucking that up. You feel me? I just, it was so new of a sound, I didn't even really understand Wait, it. He really? asked you to hop on that? Yeah, facts. Facts. Whoa. And you actually said you're like, I'm not hopping on it because it's it too wasn't, fire. It wasn't like, nah, we needed a new one. I didn't want to fuck up his wave. You know? Damn. Bro, <clears> and when we made War, yeah, War pop, is pop like, Probably didn't even have like 30,000 followers. Was that that night? I don't want to. That's why I kind of skipped it from that night. I said when we went made war because nah, it wasn't that night. You guys didn't record that night? I don't think we recorded nothing that night. We recorded like the next time. But that night I remembered when I met Pop, Favi was like kind of like just his like friend in the cut, like entourage. And Favi played me Big Drip. And I'm like, what? I'm like, he send me this. And this was my theme song for the next three months. Was Big Drip? Yes. That was before it was out? Before it was out on anything, before he was out. <laughs> like for me, he had a little one, two songs with some other hood rappers, but Big Drip was my shit. I run up to the label show, my whole label, like, yo, look, I don't know, look at this song, look at this song. For me. And then eventually 
that shit wound up blowing up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It sucks that the situation happened with Pop because we were supposed to all be, you know? know? Wow. That's a crazy thing. Because well, we like day ones in this shit, you know? You guys made some fire tracks. Yeah. Facts. Most people hate the sound of metal on metal. I mean, I get it. It can make your skin shit. Here at Full Send, we do what many other companies don't. We product test the living shit out of everything. Metal on metal to us, that's music to our ears. Get your shoddy tools, boys. Good luck. What happened? So you do War of War successful, and then you guys just, because I know you did Mannequin with him and... Yeah, even Lutwins. like the song, you know the song, She Wanna Fuck With The Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that, let me take you to the candy shop. All that shit, that shit was recorded with, like, with me and him originally, for me, and for me. How 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 cool and different is that when it's like you three from New York? Like I know you have a good relationship with Polo, but he's from Chicago. So is it does it mean a lot more when you guys come from the same spot? I mean, it's just the only difference for real is that certain things like me and Papa know, like Polo won't know. I could be like, yo, I don't know, yeah, yeah, that bitch from woo woo, such and such. Polo not gonna know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about some New York shit, you know. What does that mean? Me. Like, like, can you translate that? Oh, what I just said. Yeah. yeah. We're, I, not, we're not from New York either. That's why. No, I. Yeah. But that was like some like fake in general shit. Yeah. But like, like I could just be like, "Yo, yeah, that bitch from Brownsville." From oh, New oh okay, I see. What you're and Pop might know who exactly who I'm talking about because we from New York, same area. Yeah. Let me okay, ask okay. Same Polo, chick though. We can't have that specific conversation for. What about like the flows? The flows. I mean, you Pop and Fabi go. Like it's it's similar. Yeah, it's definitely more ser- similar. We got we got the same lingo. It's kind of like you feel me with Polo. It's like. It's like a different, a little different of an energy facts. What was uh what was Pops like in the uh in the studio? Pop being real, <clears throat> Pop kinda used to tell me like, like yo T, like, I don't even know how this shit even going crazy, T. Like, I ain't a rapper, T. <laughs> like, I'm just putting the sauce, you heard? <laughs> Let me like pop, like I swear, that nigga make a hit and we just be in the stool like this. And he'll be like, the mic, the mic. Yeah, like, hit, ooh, like, feel me? And that shit, just, you run that shit back, be like, yo, everybody jumping, taking shots, going crazy, you feel me? He, like, he had that same style where, like, he could do the melodic shit, too, and the hard shit. Like, yeah, just facts. like you, right? Yeah. Facts. But but basically, for better words, it's, like, almost effortlessly. Yeah. But is it, when like, you guys are in the studio, is it, like, a party? Like, yeah. would we fit in there or no? Um, yeah, yeah, facts. Me, like I you said, you might like, have to get a upgrade. Bronx is more this. laid back, you know. Yeah. Like, like for me, I probably yo, it's good, y'all. Ooh. I might go sit down on my phone, might talk to a little vibe or something. Pop going, yo, here, take, yo, take your shot, yo, yo get up, yeah. yo, you feel me? Like, yo, turn that up for me. Everything gonna be more live. Yeah, I feel like if I was in there and you walked in, you'd like ask me to grab you a water or some shit. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna yeah. actually grab me a water. You be the bartender? <laughs> yeah. Put oh, me to work man. right away. When when did you and Polo, uh, you guys did pop out together? When did you guys like become close? Obviously, that that track went crazy. Yeah, that track met, still slaps anytime you yeah. put it on too. When I met Polo, he was just in New York for a label interview. We got the same label, mm-hmm. and he was just starting. And like somebody linked us up, like yo, do a song with um Polo. I'm like yo, woo. I just had heard about him probably like a week before that. Or two weeks before that, I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, yeah, for me, let's get in the stool. We made pop out. I really ain't even like that song like that. We'll like I didn't, out. I didn't hate it, but I didn't see it being what it was. Like you know, even to this day, I feel like this is like our biggest song, both of us. You don't like it, and I think we both have a lot of songs that's better than pop out. Yeah, for me, but it's our Eat biggest. Us. Yeah, for yeah. me, yeah. <laughs> but it's all Vegas, I feel like right? that song hit like the college crowd and shit. Yeah. And like. Facts. Yeah. So yeah, then I guess we did the video. I mean, we did the song. And then it was like New Year's and came up and he's in New York. I'm like, what you doing? He's like, nah, and just out here. I think he's with his like, his girl and stuff. And I'm like, yo, pull up to this party. It was this party like two hours away out the city. He's like, all right, well, we was in a car. It's crazy. We never spoke about this after this. We was in a car, like, like ten of us in a 
big body. We drove like two hours to the party, mansion party. We went to Lauren. It was my friend, my, my son Molly, Lauren Hill's son. We in Lauren Hill's crib through pop out video. Went crazy. That's where you did the video? Yeah. Facts. Fuck. And so you had that success you guys didn't know you were going to have? Did that, at that point, are you like, yo, we got to just get on more tracks together, like building that relationship? Or were you guys just like boys? Nah, like, uh, nah, after, once that happened, it was like a guaranteed, I didn't, like I said, I didn't expect that. At the time, we probably would do a, a, a song and we might do like 100K, 70K views in a day. Pop Out did like a million views in a day. So it was like, oh yeah, shit. The track was me? huge. And I think I remember my first time hitting like 100K likes on Instagram was taking a picture with Polo. Really? Yeah. So it was like, yeah, that's what that's what needed to come. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, like, Polo's, I love Polo, but that, a lot of people say like that song really like jump started his career. Yeah, nah, it did. I ain't going to lie. For both of us, that was our first time being in the top 10 for sure. Yo, can I ask you about the, the chain stuff? The, yeah, the, I, I heard that there's a rumor that you still, there's still, the police still have four chains, four Cubans. Yeah, the police got like four Cubans of mine. I probably, I didn't even count it, but I know they got a decent amount. It's probably around four. And how do we expedite the process of getting that back? I mean, if you got people that can help me, I'd love <laughs> to help. I mean, I'd love to know them because I've been trying and they've just been playing with me. They took them all this evidence to my situation, what happened with me. Yeah. But fun fact, I had on like one Cuban and a watch when I got shot. Everything else was in my hotel safe. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, so if y'all keep the stuff that I had on, we won't even argue that yet. Let me get this stuff out the safe. And they didn't give it to me. I don't know why they're doing that. And they claim that that's like an, an evidence thing? Yeah, they got like a million dollars of my stuff in possession, but we're figuring it out. Bro, that's fucking wild. That is weird. They're probably all fucking trying them on, taking photos or some shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if that guy might be borrowing it going out to the club? Yeah, it's a club in the spot, right? I don't with, know. With your shit on. So. It's weird, but I know. Yeah, they only play with certain type of people. It's crazy in this world, you know? But Yeah. What about the the collab with Ice Spice? How did that all come together? And you bought her a chain, right? A little watch. A watch? 150K? Something like that. <laughs> what watch was it? A Richard. Oh, damn. You looking like... <laughs> it's pretty That's dope. a splash. Was it plain Jane? Uh, nah, I don't think so. Oh, my God, bro. What, well, what, well, how do you, like, make that decision? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just going to splash on Ice Spice like this. <clears throat> you call it a splash? Yeah. Nah, that's I mean, that's like, a splash. Uh, 150K Richard. Oh, that's shame about nine. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's nah, I live like, you feel me? I live a high life and I feel like it was like some longevity in it. You know, I feel like she was going to be an artist that stick around. For sure. I consider New York City my shit. You feel me? Welcome to my shit. You yeah. feel me? That's it. It's freaking a little sauce on that. And that's, what what was her reaction dope. when you bought it for her? I wasn't even there. That's the real shit. Oh, damn. That's crazy. You were it makes what? it more of a flex, bro. He wasn't there when they gave it to her. Oh, damn. I thought it was a whole... So how'd you get it delivered to her? I had the jewel to give it to her. And so, you're just like, yo, this is from TJ? Yeah. That's that's pretty sauce. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I had met her before, before I had got shot trying to sign her and stuff like that. It didn't work out like that. And I kind of like... Like, as she was coming up from before Munch dropped up, like, we used to have conversations about being strategic with her, like, about what she doing and stuff like that. So as she was going up, like, her success was, like, exciting to me, you know? And Gangsta Wu had came out vibing, you know? And it was her first time going on the charts. And I was like, you know, hmm. You deserve do, do a little something. Do you ever think you have, like, a... Kind of like an eye for the talent because you talk about Pop Smoke had 5K on the gram, starts collabing with you. People Polo. under, bro, one, one, I was young, right? So I didn't get in the right approach. And I was also like a little bit risky with my money and how I could sign. Like, Fabi would tell you, like, that nigga probably, I, bro, that nigga that's signing me for whatever the fuck. I'm like, nigga, I'm like, yo, bro, look, I'm gonna get you signed. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I didn't even really like, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I ain't processed like life like that yet. You feel me? 
But I definitely do got an eye for sure. There's way more people that I done from like, the beginning, you know? You just tell them and you kind of collab with them and then they fucking take off. I posted K Flock. He had like 30,000 on the gram. And two days later, he got 300,000. Damn. You just two, just three days story? later. You posted nah, on the story? No, on my gram. Yo, you the littest in New York. Everybody go follow K Flock at K Flock at K Flock at K Flock. Oh, damn. What That's does he big. say to you after that? Yo, you know the vibes, my heart good looking, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Damn. That's lit. Yeah. Yeah, nah. So Is that just love or like you like managing him or like? Okay. I knew him since I was like 11 years old. You know what I'm saying? And I seen the potential and deeper than just knowing him. Yeah, I seen the potential. And I'm like, nah, I got to help him. You feel me? Push him through. And I get satisfaction out of that. For you sure. Know? Yeah, I feel you. I get like real satisfaction out of it. And then I look at like how like life was going and I kind of like almost feel like I predicted so much that that's things like why like like I give ice a rich because it's like nigga in the moment it's like wow. But it's like I look at it different like damn nigga, just made history. Another one. Yeah. As in like another person, another star at the city that I could genuinely say that I supported and was there for him from the beginning. It's like, I should add it to my catalog. You feel me? And we lit. Like, yeah. You feel me? You come to this shit. And that's what makes it my shit. Cause anybody will tell you is like, what you really going to say bad about TJ? Like, he really there for the city, you know? Yeah. Do you think that's lacking? Or like, obviously, you're pretty passionate about it. But do you think there needs to be more of that like support coming from everybody? I feel like. I don't care what people do, you feel me? Me, in my city, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting, this is how I feel like I contribute. Yeah. Like, I put on to say, and I do, we do need to see more of that. I take it back. We do need to see more of that, you know? And I feel like some people do, though. But in New York City, I don't know. I don't know if, you feel me, if that's that's not the most common place to be like that. Yeah. I feel like you don't really see that that much. Maybe Atlanta more, but like... Chicago, you don't really see that. Over and here. I feel like honestly, like 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 deeper than like it being competitive, I feel like I feel like you damn near like I feel like me, you could you're gonna have to work hard to be bigger than me. Yeah. You know, so it's not like it's a thing like, yo, I'm scared of being like competitive because you can get hotter than me, mm. you know, at a moment or whatever, I don't know, but it's like I'm going to always be TJ. Yeah. And I established that. So now everything else, like if you come and you break every record and I assisted you, you know what I'm saying? That just added to me. Like I just helped another live, you know? How, how competitive is that? Because like, you, like you're dropping an album pretty much. Uzi just dropped. Thug just dropped. Gunna just dropped. So like, do you, is that something you're looking at? Or are you only focused on yourself? Nah, because... You got, Can you I not remember. talk about Gunna in front of me and TJ too, Steiny, please? Oh, That's bad. more of a year. No, nah, yeah. nah, this is what I'm, I'm just, trying to I say, don't right? He's that. on the charts. Remember, I don't. Right? It's not yeah. like that with him. But. There's people in this world, right? It's prior Japanese artists, right? Yeah. That outsells me by a million times, right? I would never want to be him. You no, know, I'm yeah. always like be fun being TJ. You know what I'm saying? So. Uzi dropped like a, like a week or two before me. He might have saw me this week again on his third week. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I wish I was number one. You know what I'm saying? We would strive for the best. But one, it just it just probably won my time. Feel me? And two, I'm still TJ. Like, like I established being cool in my own lane, you know? And like, to me, I'm damn near the biggest because in my head, when I think about where I started from, I don't know where everybody started from. When I think about where I started from and where I'm at, it's like, what else What else do I want? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way <laughs> to look at it. Or Just being, yeah. Um, I was going to say, though, there's definitely been times, I can't think of specific situations, but like where artists will drop on the same day as somebody else. And it's like kind of out of spite. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But that shit's just like, it's kind of funny, but it's also like, is that risky to do shit like that? It is a competition, though, in a certain way, still, right? <laughs> but that's it's like, a competition it's for who like posts. I got number one, you know. Yeah. And well, me personally, what I actually realized with my brand is, I like just like looking at history. I'm not like a person that it's hard for me to compete for number one against a big artist 
because I think it go off for like trends. And I got my own solid core fan base that it's not cool in just the world just to, oh, let me go just check out TJ album. I feel like it's my fans that like TJ and like establish like, yeah, we listen to TJ that runs it back and run it back and run it back that'll make me go up and go platinum, you know? Mm -hmm. Deeper than just everybody listening at one time. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of harder for me, I feel like, to explode in the first week. I've never thought about that, like that, but I, I was looking at the charts and like Taylor Swift's four, I think, right now. Yeah. And But it's like she she makes songs where everybody can listen to. So yeah. you're talking about like how you have that loyal fan base that's just going to be with you no matter what. Yeah. In the long run, that's way more important. Yeah. Not that there's, there's a lot of fucking Swifties out there. T-Swift's fire, yeah. Do, yeah. do you fuck with that or no? With Taylor Swift? Yeah. Um... I don't really listen to Taylor Swift. I like her old tracks. You and, and, and that's what I mean, though. But like, you feel me? I would never want to be Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift probably lives a way richer. And, you know, like, she probably got way better peace of mind. Everything. But I just would never want to be. Would you ever go out of your Taylor lane Swift. and do like a a track with like an artist like that? Or like a just completely different? Yeah, for sure. The better myself. Yeah, as long as it don't go on against my like, you know, morals and all that, which it shouldn't. Yeah. It would be good. Yeah. What made what made you look up to Bieber when you were young? Like not a lot of rappers would say that. I mean, one, I'm like real, real, real complacent with myself. Like, you know, I don't care, like, for me, what it is. I was a kid and I used to like like at the little dance moves the girls used to be on him. All the girls I liked in school used to like Justin Bieber. I used to be like, damn, I gotta do that shit. I gotta sing, dance, get a guitar. That's what it's gonna take, cause you know, see now. I got the source to know what they like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was young, I was trying to figure it out. So I think that's kind of- What, really what was your advice. favorite old school Bieber track? I like One Time. One Time is oh a banger. One well, Time. You would never like- Eeny, eeny meeny. You would never throw that on the ox. Like if you were on a party bus going to like the club, would you ever have the no, confidence not going to throw to. that on the ox? Because this guy will do that <laughs> not shit going, and kill the Not going, not going. Nah, I mean, I mean- the If you have a party bus full of white girls on the way back from the club at 3 a.m., if you put on Eeny Meeny, it's probably yeah. one of the best tracks you could play. Wait, with Kingston? Yeah. Yeah, but it's facts, like, facts. No, it's no, boy. not going okay, so, to. It okay, has I to want, be it has fine. to be on the way back to the after party. Are yeah. you willing to try that? Huh? Yeah, we probably did it. But try you're not gonna I always go up with Sean Kingston in real life. That's my boy. Yeah. For me, I always go up with for me. So I ain't even really remember that was him. For me, I'm talking mad shit. Like you fat nigga. You <laughs> talking mad shit. And he's like, nigga, I got hits. Yeah, hits thing. <laughs> he hit ass thing. He like what? He start throwing them bitches. I'm like, oh, he played that any mini. I'm like, oh, yeah. he brought me back for a second. Yeah, no, he's got one other song. He performed with the other <laughs> nah. He got a he has couple. Tons of no, like, 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 no, <laughs> no, no, not like that. Like a beautiful big girl, beautiful girls. Yeah, yeah. beautiful girls. Or so yeah, he like it though. <laughs> no, that wasn't shade. My bad. All right. So gonna kind of change it up, but. Can we talk about how like you were supposed to leave to Paris, the whole situation, and just how that whole moment and that night has like kind of affected your life? Man, yeah, I, I thought life was good, sweet, and then yeah, I woke up, my ass couldn't move. It's, I mean, my ever since then, my life been definitely changed. I think about things a lot more. I try to be a lot safer. You feel me? Um. In a barbershop earlier, just trying to get like trim. I had no time, just trying to trim my shit. For me, I'm almost fucking up my shit. Somebody walk past the glass. I'm looking like, for me, shit, I got a PTSD, I'm dealing with it. It's life. It's what's going on right now. Yeah, you call yourself like what, the miracle kid? Yeah, I am a miracle kid. Shit, it's a miracle. I got shot seven times or up a body about a year ago, and I'm fine, you know? I know, when you hear that, it sounds like. What the fuck? Like seven shots? What? What is like? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's crazy too because from Fifty Cent from New York, he had a similar situation. Have you guys talked? Like, does, has he hit reached out to you at all? <clears throat> yeah, I spoke to Fifty Cent. I spoke to Fifty Cent. We were chilling, talking and stuff like that. Did he like? Yeah. Did did a lot of people come out and give you like words of advice and like so specific people that were just there for you, like supportively? I mean, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I had. A, a cool conversation with 50. We spoke and took a little picture. It went viral. We ain't really like lock in like that, to be honest, though. It was just like, for me. Um, for me, my son Pharrell, let me take it back because Pharrell legend. That's how I speak. But now Pharrell was with Pharrell and we had like some a good two days of chilling, talking, recording, 
and he dropped some good jewels on me after I had got shot. What was it like, like when you woke up in the hospital? Like you were in a coma for five days, right? What was that like when you like, do you remember anything when you just like just woke up where you're just like, what the fuck just happened? I woke up and I had a nurse. Her name was Lauren. And I remember she woke, I woke up and it wasn't like the movies. It was kind of like the movie, but it won't. Cause I didn't wake up with the light in my face. Like most of them. But it starts up. like a little blurry. Yeah, but nah, I mean, I don't even remember being blurry. I'm just making, making up in a room and I'm in a hospital bed. I'm like, what the fuck? And it's like, I don't know if I was tired, lazy. It probably was just the drugs, but like, I almost like, oh, I'm in the hospital. Like, I didn't think to get up. I don't know. I couldn't get up, but I'm just like chilling. Then lady come in and she's like, oh, he's up. And it's the movie started. Damn, and they come, that is like a movie. Me. She's like, yeah. She's like, oh, she's like, I'm she's like, you didn't look so good last week, buds. <laughs> and I'm like, last week, what? <laughs> For me, I can't talk. I'm like, what you mean last week? You bugging. And for me, I came, probably took like a little, another probably like, might have been 30 minutes, might have been like an hour. I see my mom woke in. I'm like, oh shit, she sorry. What was your mom's reaction to that? My mama, G, she like, she wasn't really crying. She kind of like, she knew I'm going to be all right for me. The family, yeah, the alleged person that 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 had that had got locked up for shooting me. For me, that nigga, he had got caught. That's like the first thing I remember. My mom was like, "Yo, yeah, somebody got locked up for your shooting. You gonna be alright?" She like, "Woo, woo, woo." She like, she kind of like, she cocky. She like my height, man. Like, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, word, that's crazy, you know, for me. Do you wait when she tells you that? Like, are you immediately angry at the whole situation? Angry at myself. I was angry at myself. I let anybody do anything to me. I don't know who did what. I just know that if I got shot, how the fuck I let me get shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I was really mad. Like, what? I let what happen and I couldn't just, I couldn't even understand, like, how? Yeah. And I thought I, like, knew better than that. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you're, healthy again and you're able to leave what's like the first thing you do and like did you make any immediate changes yeah i got security full time um i mean i just rested my mind and yeah i kind of like a couple changes i don't point out my security point is but you know yeah (laughs) yeah how much of you is thinking about music and like your career at that point Music is my whole life. I just, I ain't never stopped thinking about music. I was in this, this stool in the hospital. I brought the stool to the hospital. Really? Yeah, I couldn't even breathe. I'm shy in my lungs trying to record. What the? That's crazy. You said you weren't re- like religious before, but do you believe, like, I don't know, it happened for a reason or something? Or like, you're meant for more now? I definitely always felt like I knew I was meant for something good. I didn't even really feel like, I knew it was a possibility, but I didn't really feel like I was going to die, you know? And I didn't want to be like, in my head, like, you know, mixed with the drugs, but in my head, I don't like, I don't want God to think I'm cocky. You feel me? So I'm like, I don't know how to even really think about it. But I'm like, I don't feel like it's my time. I feel like you good, but how do you feel like you good? You shot seven times and you don't even feel the pain. So I'm like, am I good? Damn, like, you feel me? Yeah. And I wound up being good, but I felt like I was like, right. Yeah, seven times is fucking insane. That's crazy. That could that it, it's gotta be some sort of crazy sign though, right? Like surviving something like that is insane. Like right. How does it feel to go from that? And then recently you performed in Portugal. We saw you brought out Oh uh, um, nah, it wasn't Portugal it wasn't Portugal. It where was, you brought out um, speed. Yeah, speed. UK. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wireless. wireless. My fault. So you performing performing in the UK, you brought out speed. Does it hit you when you're like performing again? Like, holy shit. And were you a fan of Speed before? Facts, facts, facts. Honestly, I found out about Speed through like, I don't know exactly when he started, but but definitely before like, I was well aware of Speed before like he came out, you know what I'm saying? I don't remember exactly my first impression or how I found out about Speed, 
But I just know him. I seen him online, and for me, he got tuned in, and he told me that I was one of his favorite artists. And I'm like, yo, pop out the wireless. Let's go turn up real quick. That's Fuck. dope. And are, do you pay attention to like any other like internet or YouTubers? Um, type a little bit. Yeah, I be tuning in. Like I got like a kid. His name Lil Fifty. Lil Fifty. Yeah, <laughs> he's on YouTube. Yeah, he on YouTube. What's, What's he, he doing there? He, he playing with like. Badass toys and shit. <laughs> Let's go. And he be watching like Funny Mike. Oh, you know, yeah. He yeah, tuned yeah. in with Lil 50, you know, for the sun time. Nah, that's my son. But I be, we be tuned in watching like Funny Mike and what else he put me? He put me on a couple things. That's dope. Like Nelk Boys or? Yeah. Would you ever bring, <laughs> would you ever bring them on stage or not? If they come. If, if, if we <laughs> get thirds on the jet. If they come through on the thirds, definitely we on the stage. <laughs> We gonna make a video, hey, thing we gonna go down. Do you have like a favorite venue or like a or like a favorite song to perform? I like performing Moose Swings with Pop. That's a banger. I mean, all people song facts. Why why'd the album come out on the July 14th? It's crazy because that's the label, the date the label gave to me. They just like, yo, you feel me? It'd be like, yo, this is a good day. You feel me? But <clears throat> coincidentally, it's the day I got released from the hospital. So I that's got a coincidence. Shot. It's a coincidence. I got shot on June twenty second, and I was in the hospital to July fourteenth. Damn, that's crazy. So that's like the two, two, two. Yeah, that's dope. Well, yeah, no, I think you got to run, but we appreciate uh, appreciate you coming through and the album's fire. Yeah, yeah album's fire. Come on, come on the stage on the show. Bro, let's go. <laughs> I ain't seen no more. Fuck, we've been partying a lot, so we were going to skip we Rolling We were going to go to but... Rolling Loud. Yeah. I, Was, yeah. Do you love Miami, like in Rolling Loud there? Miami lit. Miami lit. Nice. Do you think Miami is the hottest chicks? Easiest place in to, the country? To I pull. like LA. What? LA? I like LA. I like Miami for the yachts, but I like LA, man. I've seen you at Booby Trap before. <laughs> oh, you see me? Really? Yeah, we were next to each other. I was like, "What's good? What's good?" You, you didn't, you didn't dab me up that time, but I think maybe now. Yeah, you show some love. If I was smack, not to own like crowds. I'll be from in my mood. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, bro. Let's okay. you go. And last thing is, we gotta fucking whatever. Please give the fucking Cubans back. Facts. I need those for a little bit, and then I'll give them to you. Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you for coming on. Hell appreciate yeah, appreciate you. you, bro. That's fire. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. 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 Y